Welcome to the first episode of Start Developing SwiftUI Apps by UW Dev. I'm Apollo from Mobile Development Club at the University of Washington. So just to clarify, this tutorial is actually adapted from this official Apple documentation called Start Developing iOS Apps. However, it is quite old. It was designed for iOS 10 using Swift 3, and we're already in the era of iOS 13 with this cool new framework called SwiftUI. So we're going to make the same app as in this tutorial. However, we'll do everything in SwiftUI. So our final goal is to make this app called Food Tracker. As you can see on the right, it shows a list of meals, displays its image, its name, and your rating for it. You will be able to add, remove, or edit information of a meal on a separate screen. And we'll be using Swift 5 for iOS 13 and Xcode 11. So if you are on a different version, you might need to make some changes to our code in order for it to run. This tutorial doesn't require you to have any prior experience with Swift or SwiftUI. So the only thing you will need is to download Xcode from the Mac App Store, which is free, and we highly recommend you to update to macOS Catalina, so you can get this live preview from SwiftUI. And now, so this is what we're going to build today, which displays a text meal name, has an input box, and has a button that set the default label text. So this is what we're going to cover today. And let's get started by creating a new Xcode project. So now once you have your Xcode downloaded, which might take a while, you can open Xcode. And this is a welcome screen every time you see when you open Xcode. Now we'll create a new Xcode project. And select iOS and single view application template. Click Next. For product name, we'll type Food Tracker. And the organization name will be the name of organization, or if you're just yourself, type in your own name. And for organization identifier, if you're a student at UW, what you can do is type edu.udub and your UWNet ID. So the convention for this organization identifier is use the reverse name of your domain. For example, our website is udubapp.dev, and what we're going to put here is dev.udub app. The program language, please choose Swift, and we'll use Swift UI for the user interface. We want to use core data, so uncheck that. Keep the check for include unit test, and uncheck include UI tests. Now next. At this step, you will be asked to save the project somewhere on your computer. So save it to a location that you remember, and uncheck create git repository on my Mac. Now create. And now we have a new Xcode project created. Let's first familiarize ourselves with Xcode. On the top of screen, you will see a toolbar, where you will find actions like run your app, selecting where to run your app, and changing the Xcode UI. So on the left-hand side is the navigator which allows you to navigate between files in your project. In the center is your main editor, where you can change your code. And on the right-hand side is the utility area. You can configure more about what's inside the main editor. Now let's make more room for ourselves in the main editor by hiding the navigator and the utilities area. You can also drag this line in the center to resize how large the canvas is for previewing our code. To preview our code, press that Resume button. And now you'll see our app initially has this text Hello World at the center of the screen. So now let's change this Hello World to something else. For example, Hello from UW App Dev. And as you can see that while I'm changing the code, this preview on the right also updates, which is pretty cool. So now let's check what our design says. It says we should display the text meal name. So let's change it to meal name. And again, it updates to meal name. So next, we want a text field. How do I get a text field? 
press this add button in the toolbar and select view library. Here is a list of views that's available for you to use. Let's filter for text field. Here's the text field. And just drag it out and drop in your code. Now we have a text field. However, SwiftUI is not going to be happy about this because it doesn't really know how to lay out these two views together. Do you want them to be vertically in a line? Or do you want them to be randomly laid out, like maybe one on the top left corner, another one somewhere in the middle, offset by like five pixels or so? So SwiftUI doesn't know. And even if you ask me, I don't know. If you just give me two random things and ask me to put them together, I might just put in a bag and randomly shuffle and mm, I'll see how it looks like, which is not really what we want here. So what we can do in this case is to embed them in a stack. If you command click on text, you'll see an option to embed in vStack. So what a vStack does is whatever is inside its braces is going to be vertically stacked together, just like how you stack dishes. So as you can see now, our indentation gets a little messed up and it's really hard to grasp if this text field is inside that vStack. So what we can do is command A to select all the code and press Control I to ask Xcode to automatically format our code. Now let's delete this extra blank line here. So now great, we have our text field and text mu and m vertically aligned together. Now, as we can see in our design, the text field should have a placeholder of enter mu and m. We can double click on placeholder and replace placeholder with what we want, which is enter mu and m. And you may ask, why do we want a placeholder in text field? So without a placeholder, you'll see that there's just this empty text field and users don't really know what to put there. Do you want them to put their birthday, their favorite song? Having a placeholder really helps by giving user a prompt of what they should input. And lastly, we can add a button. Again, we can press add and go to the view library. And here we go. The first thing here is a button. We can just drag it out just like text field and text. And there we go, a button. So button is special that it has an action which whenever you press on it, it's gonna do whatever is specified in the action. And for the display of the button, it's gonna display this text button. So now again, we can just change this button to be whatever we want to display. As you can notice, all the things we displayed are inside quotation marks, which is very important because it tells Swift and SwiftUI that this is not part of actual code. So this button is not this button here. This button tells SwiftUI that I want a button on the screen. And this button says I want the button to display the word button. So for our design, we want the button to display this text. So set default label text. Now, as you can see on the right, now this almost looks as good, but there are a few problems. First is centered in the screen, but in our design, it should be on the top. And all the elements are centered, which in our design should be left aligned on this side. So actually, empty space in SwiftUI can also be a view. Now, inside this views library, if you search for space, you have this spacer, which is a flexible width that can push all the elements. And if we put it at the bottom, it will push all of them up. If you instead put it on the very top, you'll push all of them to the bottom. All of our views are here on the top and we can change our vStack. But how, you may ask? But one thing you can do is to hold down the command key and click on the vStack in the preview on the right. And now you see this option to show SwiftUI Inspector. Here you will see some options related to our vertical stack. You can set the alignment and here you can set the alignment to be left, which is leading. You can also access this inspector by showing the utility area we talked about before. And just to showing it, you can change the alignment here, uh, center, right, which is trading 
and let's just change it back to alignment. You'll also be able to control the spacing and let's change it to eight. And as we can see our design, it has a little padding around the side. So we also want to add padding on all the sides. As we are changing the properties inside these inspectors, our code also updates to reflect this change by giving VStack an alignment of leading, which again is left for left to right languages like English, as now has a spacing of eight, and now adds a padding along all sides of VStack. So what is this dot padding here? So what we call this dot padding is a modifier, which allows us to customize views like VStack and in our design that our text field also have a rounded border around it. Therefore, we should also use a modifier to do the same. Now inside text field, we can go to add. And in addition to the views library, there's also this modifiers library. And let's search for text field and see if it has anything related. Aha, uh -huh, text field style. Again, just like how we drag out the text field, we can drag out this text field style. It adds this dot text field style here, meaning that we want to use this modifier text field style to customize text field to have the style we tell it to have. Let's start typing and see which text field styles it has. And we can see here it has rounded border, plain text field style, and default. So here we want the rounded border style. And in addition to having its name, we want to add a parenthesis after it, telling it that I don't just want a name, please give me an actual rounded border style and give it to text field so it knows. Just like here, spacer, we have parentheses after it. I don't only want the name spacer here. I want an actual spacer here to take up the empty space at the bottom for me. So again, the same reasoning. We not just want the name rounded border style, we want the actual style and give it to text field. Now I'm just gonna quickly format the code. I think we're very close to what we have in the design here. Except you might notice that we have the keyboard up, instead of return, it shows the word done. When the text field is empty, the return key is actually not enabled. So you might be thinking that maybe we can add some other modifiers by saying dot maybe return key or something like that. However, unfortunately, SwiftUI didn't expose those kind of properties for us to customize. And what we have to do is to rely on some code written by other people to help us access those kind of properties that we can customize. So what we're gonna use is called SwiftUI introspect. To use this code written by other people, what we're gonna do is to add it through Swift Package Manager. Swift Package Manager is a tool for managing the distribution of Swift code making it a lot easier for us to just simply first copy the URL to the code and go to Xcode, say file, Swift package, add package dependency, and paste that URL and just next, next, finish. Now we can use the code written by that person. And now we see that the main editor shows our project configuration and to go back to our content view, we can show the navigator area. So content view .swift, and hide navigator area to make more space for us. And resume, we'll see our thing is still there, working as expected. So now to tell Xcode that we want to use the newly imported introspect library, we'll say import, introspect. And now we notice there are some additional modifiers. If you just press dot, introspect and you have this introspect text field option and press enter xcode will automatically complete it for you and press enter again so here you first ask what do we want to call this text field we'll just say it has a name text field and be aware of the casing here so text field is two words but in swift you can only express an entity in a single word so we combine the two words together and capitalize all the words except the first one. And capitalize the first letter of all the words except for the first one. Just like here, 
introspect text field is three words, and T and F are uppercase, and I is lowercase. So now we can say text field dot return key type is down, and it should enable return key automatically. Assign to equal to true. So now if we resume, it still looks the same, and now it has the behavior we want. We can just quickly check the design, and they are the same. So as a summary, you can see that whatever you're putting in this body here, it will be shown to the user, and body should have only a single view, otherwise SwiftUI doesn't know how to lay them out. And instead of just having the default views provided by SwiftUI, you can add additional modifiers to them to provide more customizations. Next class, we'll teach you how to handle user interactions, such as when they type in some text, or when they press on the button. And that's it for today's video. For more, please visit udubapp.dev.